So it's great to be back. I presented here last year. Apologies in advance to those who sat through my talk last year. It's pretty much the same. Just <laughs> changed a few lines of code. That was it. No, I'm kidding. Um, so first of all, let's give the organizers a round of applause, right? Igor and the crew, they've been awesome. Let's do that. And also our MCs, Chris and Nathan, doing a great job, great food and so on. So anyway, I'm here to talk to you about how to build a real-time Twitter pipeline on Google Cloud Platform without using Kubernetes. Ooh, hisses from the back, okay. Um, I don't have a huge amount of slides. I like to do technical talks. I like to drop into my terminal. That's where I'm most comfortable. I hate standing out there. That's why I'm standing here. I like being on my machine. So a few slides, we'll whiz through them. I'm gonna tell you a quick story about how all this came about. And then we'll just drop into a live demo. And I'm gonna need your help with the demo. It's interactive. Um, and fingers crossed the demo gods are on my side. They have been pretty good the last few months, so uh, what can go wrong will go wrong. So a lot of my talk echoes what Sam was talking about earlier from a cloud guru. I'm not smart enough to toil in infrastructure. I just don't wanna be there. I wanna be up the stack and I'm a big uh, advocate for um, serverless components. So the demo that you're gonna see is fully serverless on GCP, don't spin up any servers, but it's massively scalable, uh, scalable to petab petabyte scale. So everyone's gotta have an impact slide, right? So I've got an impact slide. Who knows Kelsey Hightower? Kelsey Hightower is one of the biggest advocates for Kubernetes and one of the biggest contributors, and he said this just last week, and I, it's something I've been feeling for a while, right? Kubernetes is the coolest new thing on the internet, and everyone seems to treat it as a goal. It's not a goal, it's a tool. It's a fabulous tool, and it's a great piece of software engineering, but it's a tool, right? There are alternatives out there. You don't have to use Kubernetes, and even people like Kelsey are saying it. Serverless, uh, alternatives, Mesos, whatever it is. You don't have to use Kube, right? It's bloody hard. I'm not smart enough to use Kubernetes, so. Hat off to all you people running Kubernetes clusters. You're, you're super smart. I, I, I just find it incredibly complex. And all right, you got networking, security, control planes, service mesh layers, you know? All this stuff, it's, it's, it's difficult. So the story goes like this, right? Uh, I was working at Australia Post recently. We do a bit of work with them. They're starting their journey on Google Cloud Platform. We had someone come up to us. Uh, I work in the core engineering team. They're like, can you build a Twitter pipeline in just half a day? We have someone coming in, we'd really like to demo it on Google Cloud, uh, and can you pull in all our tweets and we do some sentiment analysis on it? And we're like, sure, we can do that. So the first thing we did, as any good engineer does, goes to Stack Overflow, Google's how to build a Twitter pipeline on GCP, yeah? <laughs> Come on, you've all been there, right? Uh, uh, so, the first thing that popped up when I, when I searched for it was Google Cloud, official documentation, solution design, and it was how to build a Twitter pipeline on GCP. And we took a look at the repo, the public repo, and of course, it's using Kubernetes. And we're like, oh man, we just don't wanna use Kubernetes. I didn't have the skill set, the team didn't have the skills to start spinning up Kubernetes. And I'm even talking about Kubernetes as a managed service, right, GKE on Google Cloud Platform. Don't let, it, don't let that fool you. It's still hard, even when you're running it as a, as a managed service. It's not easy. EKS on AWS, it's hard. So we're like, we don't want to use Kubernetes. But what we spotted in the repo was a Docker file. And we just thought, couldn't we just scalpel that Docker file and run it somewhere else? Like in a serverless environment on GCP, wouldn't that be cool? So that's what we did, right? So the architecture ended up like this. Not that. <laughs> Twitter, yeah. So Twitter has a public API that you can connect to and you can pull tweets. It's not the big fire hose because Twitter's huge. It's the public one, it's free. If you want the, the enterprise-y version, you gotta pay a lot of money. So we just hooked up to the public one. It was just a demo for some big wigs coming in. They wanted to see the value of Google Cloud Platform. And that's important too, right? Let's not lose sight of what we are here to do. We are here to add value to the business. We're not here to play with tech, right? I'm a software engineer, I can't believe I'm saying that stuff, but I've learned it over the years. App Engine Flex, the definition of pass on Google Cloud Platform. Takes a Docker file and runs it. Simple, 
So we scalpeled the Docker file from the uh, GitHub repo that was using Kubernetes. Didn't need Kubernetes, just gave it to App Engine Flex. The only thing we needed to add was an app.yaml file, which I'll show you, which tells App Engine Flex that we're running a custom Docker container, yeah, or a custom environment. All the tweets we sent to PubSub. PubSub is, again, serverless. Don't need to spin up any VMs. Um, I keep saying serverless. There's lots of buzzwords. Serverless for me, at least, is knowing that there's VMs or containers running my dodgy code, but I don't have to give a shit about them. Yeah, that's really where I sit with serverless. There's lots and lots of definitions of it, but that's really what I believe. So we give it to PubSub. PubSub scales. Awesome. Then we give it to Dataflow. Dataflow is Google's fully managed. Give it some code, and it spins up a cluster for you and just starts processing your data. So serverless data processing. Then we pump it out to BigQuery. Everyone's like, oh, Graham, that's all he talks about, BigQuery. Don't worry, I'm not going into BigQuery today. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving it off the agenda. And then we pump it out to Firestore using a cloud function, serverless compute. Right, super, super serverless-y stuff. Yeah, all serverless, right? No, no, uh, no VM sort of stuff. And then we wrap all that in Cloud Build. Cloud Build is Google Cloud's uh, native CI CD tool. So we don't need Jenkins. We just use Cloud Build. And Cloud Build's actually a really great tool on Google Cloud Platform. If you're gonna go into Google Cloud, have a look at Cloud Build. It's essentially you define a YAML file, you tell it the steps you want to run in your pipeline, and each step in your pipeline, you get a container. And the container has everything you need to run that step in the pipeline. Awesome, fully ephemeral. Who was here last year when I spoke? Anyone? I couldn't pronounce that word last year. I've been practicing for a year to say <laughs> ephemeral. I've got it, right? Thank you. I'm Irish, it's the accent, it's hard for us. The THs are the worst. Um, so Cloud Build, and then it just builds it for us. Deploys everything, awesome. All right, I'm running out of time, we gotta jump into a demo. So let's jump into a demo. This is the second Back to the Future reference of today. Um, it was great to see Sam also reference Back to the Future. Uh, I'm a big fan. So let's have a look at what it looks like, okay. I'm gonna move these out of the way because I'm trying to do some coding. That's a bit Annoying. All right, can everyone see? Font's okay. I've got it set at 18. Is that cool? All right, the, the guy at the very back just put his thumb up. So, uh, yeah. By the way, this is Cloud Shell in Google Cloud Platform. Awesome tool. I've actually started gravitating away from like heavyweight IDEs like IntelliJ and PyCharm, and I just do all my dev inside my browser now. And Google give you a tool called Cloud Shell, which it gives you a cloud, like a source code editor, and then you also get a terminal, right? You're, and you're already authored in it. You got all the tools you need. It's actually just running a container, so containers for the win. Um, all right. So this is the Docker file that we found in that Kubernetes solution. We didn't change it. We just scalpeled the, the Docker file, took it. The only thing I did add was my Twitter credentials. You can take a picture now. You can hack my account later. That's fine. I'm cool with that. Um, so all it does, don't judge me, it's using Python 2. I know I should upgrade to Python 3, but I just haven't had a chance yet. Um, so we just took it, it's got some dependencies, pip install, Tweepy is the API, or the, the library that you can use to connect to Twitter. It's got a Python file, and then it just runs that Python file. That's a daemon thread, right? Easy. So that's our Docker file, simple. Then we gave it a app.yaml file. That's what App Engine Flex needs in order to know what to do, right? So we tell, what is that, four lines. This is what we gave it. And I didn't modify this code, but this is actually what we built um, a few weeks ago, a few months ago. So we tell it it's a custom environment, it's a flexible environment, sorry, custom runtime, because I'm giving it the Docker file. A flexible environment, which is App Engine Flex, and we tell it how to do scaling. For the purpose of the demo, I'm just keeping it to one instance, but he could, of course, set that to automatic scaling, and App Engine Flex just go wing, wing, elastically scale up and down. Cool, right? This is the Python script. How many lines of code is that? 62 lines of code. Is everyone cool looking at a bit of code and doing live demos? All right, cool. Um, so 62 lines of code, very, very simple. Drops into a while loop, Damon Tran just goes, give me tweets, give me tweets, give me tweets, give me tweets, and then sends them to PubSub. And then here, this is how you track your tweets. 
you just give it some keywords. So I thought it would be cool if we change this. So why don't we do DOTC and we do, what's the official hashtag for today? I, I, I heard murmurs, so I didn't, DOTC19, okay. So let's do DOTC19. And apologies for my typing, because the lectern points your, lab, your keyboard up like that, I'm, I'm, it's a, I'm a bit slow. Um, I can type faster. I make, <laughs> that's what I tell my boss, anyway. <laughs> and he's cool with that. Um, boy. And we'll do 2019 as well, just in case you gave me the wrong hashtag. All right. So we're going to listen for tweets on DOTC. Okay? You can see where I'm going with this, right? So fully serverless, ingest some tweets, send it to Firestore. Yep, Firestore. And then I wrapped Firebase around that, which is like a hosting solution, just some CSS. Good old CSS. You can't live without CSS. Oh, you legend. <laughs> Come see me after. I'll buy you a pint. <laughs> Honestly, I will buy you a pint. Thank you. Um, all right, so everyone following what we're doing? Yeah. Cool. Got to deploy it. Now, don't do this normally in prod. Yeah, I'm going to send a command to Cloud Build to uh, deploy it straight away. But obviously, you'd have triggers set up. If you change something and you git commit it and git push it, triggers it, builds it on a branch staging and so on, then you merge back in. But for brevity's sake and purpose of this demo. So G Cloud is Google's command line tool. Uh, builds is Cloud Builds. Submit. Give it a config file. Oh, I forgot to show you the config file. This is the config file for Cloud Build. These are my steps. And every step is just a container. Deploy App Engine Flex, and there's the directory. Deploy my Dataflow pipeline, bit of Java code, and there's a directory. And I get a container with all that software that I need already authored to do whatever I need to do. And then a cloud function at the bottom to send it to Firestore. All right, so the config is uh, not equals equals. Oh man, my Java stuff's coming out, you know. Uh, cloud build dot YAML. Fingers crossed. It's thinking. It's like, well, really? I got to work now? Yay. OK, so it's tarballing up all my stuff. And it's going to send it to cloud build. It's going to examine that cloud build.yaml file. And it's going to deploy everything, right? So while it's doing that, I need a filler. Because that takes about three minutes. And I can't stand here for three minutes showing you log files. Or can I? Who loves logs? Glorious logs. <laughs> Come on, you love log files, right? Look at that. Look how pretty it is. Lots of logs. Anyway, it's doing stuff. So it's going to deploy App Engine Flex with a Docker container. It's going to deploy my cloud function and all that kind of jazz. So I thought it would be fun to do this while that's happening. And again, it's a filler. This is App Engine Flex running a container. But App Engine Flex actually exposes that image to you. Well, sorry, that VM, which actually isn't a VM on Google Cloud, by the way. It's actually a container. There are no VMs on Google Cloud. It's it could be a KVM process running inside, running, yeah, running on Borg, anyway, all that stuff. But you can SSH into that, right? Now, I said at the start of my talk, I like to be higher up the stack, but I'm a software engineer, so I like mucking around and trying to break stuff. You can SSH into that machine. Let's have a look. And again, you can SSH directly from the, all the security people. They're like, oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> what, are you, what are you doing? But it's fun, right? A few people have said it. Let's have some fun, right? Uh, don't worry about security. All right, so I've now SSH'd into App Engine Flex. If I top that, can anyone guess what the top processes running on App Engine Flex are? Have a guess. PS. What was that? PS. PS. Oh, sorry, top itself? Uh, no. no. Let's have a look. Wait for it. Docker D. Container D. Yeah, just running Docker under the hood. Easy. Give it a Docker file, it runs it in Docker. Awesome. All right. Well, what gets even cooler? Let's do let's SSH into the Docker container. So Docker XE Interactive. 
Oh no, wait. First I've got to list my containers. Sorry, my machine is really laggy, so bear with me. Woohoo, all right, these are all the container IDs. Let's take that container, because that's the one that's running, and do docker execute dash it, the container ID, and let's just bash straight into that. And now I can see the security people leaving, right? <laughs> Igor, you're, you're walking in, so you're not clearly not security, right? Okay, let's bash in there. What do I got? All right, let's see the file system. Well, hey, what's that file? Twitter to pub sub. All right, there's my code running in a container, inside another container, inside a Borg, which is Google's container management system. Awesome. Don't worry about that. <laughs> that point is gone. <laughs> There's a backstory to that. The reason why I had to SSH into a different project is because while I'm deploying, you can't SSH in. But you, you pretty much, but good spot, you're paying attention. That's two points. Yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, so if I do a top inside the container, now what's running? What's the top process running in that container? Come on, people. We're technical, come on. Python. It's just running my Python script. That's all it's doing. Yeah? It's just turtles all the way down, people. That's all it is, just turtles. Yeah, containers within containers within containers running my code but I don't care about that stuff. I just needed a filler. All right, so let's kill that. How am I doing on time? 13 minutes, okay. It's actually not bad. All right, so let's jump back up the stack, yeah, where I like to be. I did stuff, awesome. All right, so we've got some log files. Let's have a little squeeze at them. So it took about three minutes to deploy. I do run some of my steps concurrently in my cloud.build YAML file. Um, just to speed it up and not to bore you with logs. But if you have a look here, there's, that's Dataflow actually. That's uh, deploying cloud Dataflow, takes my Java code, which I didn't show you, um, but it's like 100 lines of Java to talk to PubSub to read the tweets and send it to uh, Firestore and BigQuery. But it just takes my code, spins up a cluster, whether it's three VMs, five VMs, 10 VMs, and then it just auto scales horizontally, and it just runs my code in a container in that cluster. Yeah, so it just takes my code, puts it on every single machine, and then runs it. So it's massively parallel. Very cool. But up here, we should have a URL, and we do. So Firebase wraps that front end, talking to Firestore, which is getting sent to all the tweets in real, Real time, everyone talks real time, but it's like, it's not real time, yeah? So if I click that, let's have a look. Come on, be good, be good. Hey, 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 what's that look like? Come on. Typical, yeah, okay. So we've got tweets coming in in real time, right? It's highlighting the word data, because I'm so creative. Data, right? And the reason why you're seeing data is, do you remember the code? I think I had data here. Yeah, I had data. And then in the front end, I'm just looking for data. It's hacked. It's just to show you some tweets come in and so on. But inside uh, Dataflow, which we can have a quick look at here, I wasn't gonna show you Java, because it's Java, but I still do code in Java. This is cool. I've got a bit of time. I wasn't gonna show it, but. So this is Dataflow and boilerplate Java. <laughs> but it's really cool, right? So what you can do is you can write some code, talk to PubSub, yada, yada, yada. Check this out. You can run, way. you can run SQL directly inside your pipeline. So I'm actually filtering the tweets coming through and looking for, dear, I cheated a bit, I pre-prepared that because I didn't want to do too much typing. But you can tell what it's doing, right? This actually, means I don't have to write boilerplate data flow code, or I don't have to write MapReduce. Yeah? I can just write SQL directly in my pipeline. That's awesome. It's a really new feature of Dataflow, which is why I'm a bit apprehensive showing people, because it's not ready for project, but it's very, very cool. It's similar to like KSQL, if people use Kafka for data processing, or Spark SQL, yeah? Interrogate a real-time stream of data using SQL without having to write lots and lots of gnarly code. I think that's really cool. So you can see why 
data is coming through, right? Because I'm filtering for it, and then I'm sending it to Firestore. All right, time. It's not too bad. So we've had a look at some Docker stuff, a Docker file. We've had a look at yap.yaml, which defines how to run that Docker file. Had a look at some Python, Python 2, I'm sorry, uh, Java, and some cloud build. So you can see how it's all tied together, right? It's just calling APIs. That's all it is. That's my job as a software engineer, cloud engineer, whatever you want to call me, I just call APIs. Solve problems by calling APIs. I don't want to be toiling down there with the infrastructure. It's just a, it's a waste of my time. And, uh, and you, you don't want to see my sysadmin skills. Seriously, awful, dreadful. All right, so the final piece of the puzzle. Can we tweet now and see it come up in that thing that I should be showing you in our code in here? Is anyone tweeting? Because something just popped up with a hashtag. But don't, no, don't tweet yet. I will need your help in a minute. All right. So I've got a tweet ready to go. And bear in mind, this was all just deployed, yeah? Dataflow was just deployed. A cloud function was just deployed. Uh, App Engine Flex was just deployed, and so on. So I've got a tweet ready to go. This is a plug for my Twitter account. Feel free to follow me and tell me how awful I am on stage. That's great. So hopefully the demo gods are kind to me at hashtag DOTC in Melbourne today. So hopefully we'll see it. Let's tweet it. Oh, someone's popping up. Someone's tweeting. You can see it. Come on. Takes about five to six seconds when it works. Yeah? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> there we go, right? It mightn't seem like a lot, but that's cool, right? I didn't spin up a single server for that. I just deployed it completely serverlessly on GCP. I went out over public internet on SSL, don't worry people, on SSL, hit Twitter, Twitter processed it internally in their own data centers, which by the way, they run on GCP now. Well, they run a lot of their data analytics workloads on GCP. <laughs> oh! <laughs> who was that? Put your hand up. Thank you, I can't see who it is, but you get a point too. I, was, I think I just thought it were cute, but you know. Um, yes, what was I saying? So out on public internet, hits Twitter servers. They pro and you can imagine the amount of data that Twitter are processing, right? Um, they publish it to their API, and then I've got Tweetbee inside a container, listening to that API, processing it, sending it to PubSub. Hey, hey, it's working. It's cool. Processing it, sending it to Dataflow. Dataflow is then running SQL on top of that, and then pushing it to BigQuery, and also pushing it to Firestore, and then Firestore is talking to a front end, and then the tweet comes through. What was that, five seconds, right? That's pretty cool. All right, keep it family friendly, folks, yeah? I'll give you two more minutes with this. It seems to be working pretty well. Hey, look at this, it's cool. All right, so that's the demo. It worked, awesome. So let's just jump back into my Slides, I don't do a lot of slides, I'm almost there. Five minutes, cool, perfect timing. All right, look at that, straight on to closing thoughts. Demo, closing thoughts, gone, pub, you and me. Yes, and you. I've said it, right, don't be fooled. Kubernetes is hard, look, I'm not saying don't use Kubernetes. I'm saying use the best tool for the job, yeah, it's that, all that edge, yeah, we're technical people, software engineers, problem solvers. Pick whatever tool's best for you. And tool can be tools on cloud, it can be on-prem, whatever. I also do premy stuff, I know, God help me. But that's what adds value to the business, right? If GCP is good for you, use GCP. If AWS is good for you, use AWS. Or use both. There you go, Chris. There you go, Nathan. Did my job. Where's Nathan? <laughs> is he happy? He's happy. Any Azure people? <laughs> if you want to use Azure, use Azure. No, look, seriously. We use whatever tool is best, right? And what I'm saying is Kubernetes is really good at solving problems, yeah, if you know how to use it. It's complex, steep uh, learning curve. Um, but if you don't need to use it, like I just showed you, don't, right? Less stuff to do. Higher up the stack. Tools are not goals, yeah? Uh, this is, um, there's lots of stuff on, on Twitter at the moment from some really fabulous people. Kelsey being one of them, obviously. I'm, I'm, I'm obviously a fan of his. 
uh, Jess Frazell from Microsoft, she is awesome. She also wrote a great blog post called You Might Not Need Kubernetes. It's like four paragraphs, but she just nails it. She's like, you don't have to use Kubernetes. And that's kind of, I'm echoing her thoughts as well, right? Tools are not goals. They're tools. Treat them like tools. Uh, just because Kubernetes is the shiniest, sexiest new thing on the internet doesn't mean you have to use it. Yeah? Less toil. So Jennifer was talking about toil. Yeah? So less toil equals more productivity. It's basic. Uh, the less time I have to spend patching servers, printing them down, printing them up, whether they're EC2 instances or GCE instances, whatever. I don't want to do it. I just want to solve business problems. That comes into the next point. Never lose sight of the business value. And we forget that a lot as technologists, right? We get so caught up on technology and cool new things like Kubernetes and Firecracker on AWS and all this stuff. And we go down these rabbit holes and we lose sight of actually what we're there to do. Add value to the business. Solve the business problems, yeah? And serverless containers are already here. Who's heard of serverless containers? A few people. You can come for pints too because we can have a great talk about serverless containers. For me, that's my, my utopia, is serverless containers. I have a Docker file, I give it to a service, and it just runs. I don't care where it runs, I don't even need App Engine Flex anymore, don't need it. Just take my Docker file and run it. Who's heard of Fargate on AWS? There you go, serverless containers. Who's heard of Cloud Run on GCP? Nathan has, he works for Google. There's no surprise there. It's awesome, all right? That's what I'm really excited about is serverless containers. Uh, it's based on Knative, which abstracts Kubernetes yet another layer down. And it, it's like, it comes back, right? When they, when they talked about service containers at Cloud Next last year for Google, I just kind of wrapped my head around Kubernetes. And then I was just like, I have to throw the book out the window. I don't need it anymore. Serverless containers abstracts that gnarliness away from me. Just give it a Docker file, run, gone, move on. And that's it. Hope you enjoyed it. Demo gods were good. The, I've open sourced all that source code. You can hit it on that URL. I'll leave it up for a minute, take a picture. Um, and I'll be around for questions and points afterwards. So there you go. Thank you.